Method number 10, adapting non-photographic lenses, part two. Okay, you've purchased your first non-photographic lens. Now it's time to test it out to see if it works on your digital camera. I've developed six steps for testing a non-photographic lens to determine if it will work on your camera. Let's take a look at my six steps. Step number one, do your test inside. I like to do it in my basement where it's fairly dark and select a subject that's the typical distance away from your camera that you like to shoot your photos. Then make sure that there's a light on your subject. Make your subject brighter than the background. Step number two, Take your camera and set the ISO to around 800, the shutter speed to about 1 200th or 1 250th, and put your camera in live view because you're going to focus on the LCD screen on the back of your camera during this test. The third step is to move the lens back and forth in front of your camera going to have to put down my board and demonstrate this. So I've got my camera on and it's set up as mentioned in step two. Now you move the camera back and forth in front of your sensor. Just like that. And while you're doing that, you're looking at the image come in and out of focus on the LCD screen on the back of your camera. Step number four, adjust the exposure. In other words, if the image you're seeing on the LCD screen is too light or too dark, adjust the shutter speed and or the ISO so that the image is just the right exposure. Also, make sure that you don't put the rear of your lens too far into your camera because if the rear of the lens comes in contact with your sensor it very likely could scratch your sensor. Step number five when the image is in focus note the distance and that is your flange focal distance. Make a mental note of that distance, how far it is away from the camera when it's in focus, and then take a photo. It looks sort of like this. Let's say I'm focusing on the microphone and I'm moving it back and forth, and right about here, the microphone is in focus. I take a look at that distance, make a mental note of how far that is from the camera, then I Take a photograph. And the final step, take a look at that photograph that you just took to see if the image vignettes or has dark corners. If it does, repeat your test on a camera with a smaller sensor. For example, this camera was an APS-C camera, and if the image, when it's in focus, vignettes, then try your lens test on a smaller sensor, in this case, a micro four-thirds camera. Now, the one thing that all adapting methods do have in common is that when they affix the lens to the camera, when they adapt it, the lens is about the focal flange distance from the camera. In other words, you've done your test and you know about how far that lens has to be away from the camera body in order to get good focus. And you have to adapt the lens so that when it's adapted and held in place in front of the camera, it's pretty close to that distance that you found to be the flange focal distance. Now, while there are various methods to adapt or affix that non-photographic lens 
to your digital camera. I have found that there are four methods that work best for me. The four methods that I use for adapting a non-photographic lens to a digital camera are using rings, bellows, helicoids, or anything goes. In other words, just try something that's really off base and unusual. So those are the four methods that I use for Frankensteining a lens. Let's take a closer look at each one of these four methods. Method number one for Frankensteining a non-photographic lens to a digital camera is using rings. Attach rings to the rear of the lens that you are going to adapt. These rings will provide the needed flange focal distance, the needed separation from the camera, and the rings will be used to actually attach the adapted lens to the camera, like this. What type of rings am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about step up and step down rings, I'm talking about extension tubes, reversing rings, and even spare lens mounts that you remove from an old lens that you were about to toss. Now, usually you don't know exactly which ring or rings that you are going to need. Uh, therefore, it's really great to have an inventory of many different types of rings so that when you are adapting your non-photographic lens, you can mix and match the various rings until you get a workable solution. Now, many of these rings screw together or they snap together, but a few of them you are going to have to glue together. And I've tried various types of glue, and this is the one that I like the best. It's called Loctite Super Glue in gel form. Now here's a couple of examples of non-photographic lenses that I have adapted using the ring method. Uh, this one is a Miopa uh, Mio Stigmat lens, 50 millimeter f1, and I attached two rings to it, a step-up ring 49 millimeters to 52 millimeters, and then a 52 millimeter reversing uh, uh, ring that I glued to the step-up ring. So with these two simple rings, I was able to properly attach the lens to my Fuji EX2 camera, and it has the exact perfect flange focal distance. This is a Wollensack oscilloscope lens. One end of it, I used a couple of rings, a step-up ring and a reversing ring, uh, so that I could hook it up to my Fuji EX camera. Now, the other end, I attached three rings, and this is actually a Nikon mount. So uh, on this end, if I mount it in reverse, I can put it on a Nikon camera, and if I mount it uh, the proper way, I can attach it to a Fuji X camera. A little novel twist there, if you will. Now, one last piece of advice I want to give you when it comes to using rings for adapting lenses, don't overdo it. Let's take a look at this picture. The lens you're looking at on the right, I used over 20 rings on it. And while it did have the proper flange focal distance from the camera with these 20 rings on it, I found it to be quite front heavy and unstable. Now, if you need to mount a non-photographic lens that far away from your camera, a better method than rings might be to use method number two, bellows.